It's good to see lots of other than Fuji brands jumping on the bandwagon and producing more and more lenses for Fuji X mount cameras. Samyang are certainly doing it and they are doing it well. This 75mm f1.8 lens is a perfect example of what can be done for Fuji X mount. Great telephoto reach, wide fast aperture and the quality that can certainly give Fuji own lenses a run for their money. In this video I'll talk about its performance, photography and video build quality price, what it is good for and in the end I'll give you my final thoughts and hopefully help you decide if this lens is for you or not. So keep watching, don't skip, and you are going to find out more about it. Firstly, some housekeeping. I have just started a new channel for all of you who keep asking me to make reviews in Polish. This video about this lens is already there for Polsku. If you do speak Polish and prefer to listen to me waffle in Polish, check it out and follow me there for weekly videos too. One more, this lens has been sent to me by Samyang distributor here in UK for this review. However, as always, I was not paid or asked to say anything specific about it. So this is my honest and completely unbiased opinion about this lens. So what do we have here? 75 mm wide aperture prime. This is mighty 112 and a half millimeter full frame equivalent. This is totally a telephoto focal range that has got a lot of uses. Firstly, this focal range will give you amazing subject to background separation and also lens compression. What it means, it means that you get superbly blurred backgrounds when shooting wide open and those blurred backgrounds will always seem closer than they really are to your subject due to lens compression. This gives images and video shot with this lens more professional or more wow factor than 35 or 50 millimeter can do. Images shot with it sometimes have that different than what we see with naked eye look and almost 3D look. Quality, this lens is good. It delivers punchy and sharp images, but it has got some issues little issues. Wide open it is ever so slightly softer and not as sharp as it should be. Not really a problem as this gives images more film-like look and they look a little bit less digital. Also there is some chromatic aberration visible in the center when shooting with it wide open, very little, and quite a bit more around the edges. Something that is really common with wide aperture primes especially in this class and in this price range. This happens wide open only, this gets under control and totally disappears when closing the aperture down. Anywhere from f2.8 and the softness and chromatic aberration go away and the sweet spot for this lens when everything is just working is f4. Overall images this lens produces are very nice and it is a total pleasure to shoot with this lens. Autofocusing is fast, silent and accurate, but it has got occasional wobble. This is very similar to all the Samyang lenses that I have tested in the past. Autofocus works, but then it just stops working and I need to switch the camera off and on again to get it going again. There's also occasional and very little, little pulsing when the autofocus wants to latch onto something, but is thinking about it for a split second. All, all this happens very rarely, but it happens. Overall, not huge issues and something that Samyang could address and fix in the future with firmware updates. The bokeh is smooth, obviously hugely dependent on what you actually have in the background, but generally speaking, smooth and pleasing to the eye. For video work, AF works well, it's not a stabilized lens and this focal range can make it a little bit more challenging to keep your shot steady when shooting handheld, but totally doable. It delivers solid results and a look that is more cinematic. Something different here is the manual aperture control. With the single switch on the lens, you can choose manual focus or aperture control. Fuji cameras are known for not so smooth aperture changes via the camera when filming. The aperture changes in very visible steps. This lens does it differently. I think it does it electronically but internally within the lens. When the ring is turned the aperture changes but not on the camera just in lens and it does change smoothly. This is called preset aperture control here. Kind of cool but a little gimmicky. I personally would control the brightness with a variable and the filter not the aperture but you can do it this way with this lens if you want to. I need to add that one thing I have noticed editing the footage shot with this lens that sometimes the autofocusing pulses it kind of changes from one place to the other in steps like it's hesitating a little bit not every time and only occasionally and it could be a problem only with the copy i've got here with this lens but overall 
it shouldn't be really happening in a modern lens like this. Not good news for filmmakers is the crazy amount of focus breathing visible. This is when it looks like the lens is zooming in or out when you change the focus from something close to something further away. This is, however, very common with primes, photocentric primes in this class. What is it good for? This is a perfect lens for portrait photography, no doubt. That subject to background separation and the bokeh give the portrait shot with it that extra special look. You do need, however, some space to step back, often not great to shoot portraits in a small spaces. It is also great for street photography. It is a small and inconspicuous lens, plus that focal range allows you to grab candid shots without drawing attention to yourself. It is also a superb lens choice for close-up and nature photography. Overall, a prime that is good for most of situations when you don't want to show too much of the surrounding and want to concentrate on a subject you are focusing more. It creates more of that personal and more intimate look. Built all plastic, hard, tough plastic. It matches the look and design of all current AF Samyang lenses. This one, however, is small and it will look extremely well on any Fuji camera. Important. It features this Samyang brand red ring tucked in the front of the lens. Nice and only visual add-on that makes no difference to what the lens does. 62mm filter thread, nice and small, making filter purchases a little bit cheaper. This wide and fairly smooth focus or aperture ring with one mode one or mode two switch that switches in between the two options. This can be customized to do other things, but for that and for firmware updates, you need an optional Samyang lens station. Metal mount with weather sealing. This lens is fully weather sealed and protected against light rain, snow and dust. The lens weighs very impressive, 257 gram. Amazing size and weight for what actually is 112 and a half millimeter telephoto wide aperture prime. Possibly the smallest and the lightest telephoto lens I have used, certainly on Fuji camera. Price, value for money, it retails for £475 here in UK or $500 in US. Cheaper than Fuji equivalent would be for sure, but it's not Fuji. I don't think there, there is 75mm Fuji lens available anyway. There's however very good and very sharp Viltrox 75mm f1.2, which costs about the same. It has got wider aperture and I think personally that it's slightly better lens overall, although it is a little bit bigger and heavier than this. So why would you go for this? You would go for this if you had any other Samyang lenses and wanted to have another one to match the look and the quality it delivers. If the size and weight matters to you, this is small and certainly light. It delivers really decent results and in the end of the day, it comes down to your own personal preference, what works for you. If you can find this in good condition secondhand, much cheaper than brand new, then this would be an amazing value for money. Brand new, it has got very stiff competition from Viltrox right now. Conclusion, this is a lens that delivers very good results. A lens that looks amazing on any Fuji camera and one that is small and light. I had almost no problem shooting all kinds of content with it and I really enjoyed using it. It compares really well to any on Fuji lenses and it is cheaper than Fuji on lenses, but it has got that Viltrox looming over it, unfortunately. If you ignore that one lens, the Viltrox, that one competition, this is a really good choice for portrait or street photography in its own right. It's a lens for some young loyal fan or someone who just wants simplicity. This offers all that but it could be just a little bit cheaper. And this is it from me. I hope this video was in some way informative and helpful. If it was, please give me the thumbs up, follow me on Instagram and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. So keep watching, don't skip, and you're going, and you're going to uh, heal. <laughs> what is it good for? What is it? It is also great for street photography. It is small and it's inconspicuous. Yeah. It is also great. It is also great for street photography. It is also great for street photography. It's bird, go away. Tweet tweeting bird. Fucking tweeting.